Hi, I'm Bern Nowak, Assistant Sailing Coach and Recreational Program Manager. Just wanted to go over rigging of both the FJs and 420 sailboats, uh, rigging, launching, uh, uh, de-rigging, and storing. So this is a Flying Junior or FJ sailboat uh, stored on the dock. The first step is usually to untie the boat tie downs. Uh, on each side of the boat, there's a line that is tied with two half hitches. Uh, so you have to undo the half hitches. And you'll see that the line goes through this trucker's hitch. Got to undo it from there. And then there's a uh, upside down U-bolt that the line goes through. Okay, so you undo that. And I'm gonna get, get the other side. Also untie that. Two half hitches. Okay. Next thing I usually do is undo the main halyard uh, from the cover. The main halyard is tenting the cover so that it doesn't collect water. The cover doesn't collect water. Um, and it's cleated in the Cunningham cleat. Okay, this isn't the cleat for the main halyard when you actually rig though. It's just for storage overnight. So I usually stick my finger in there and then pull the end all the way out of the cleat. And then I can pull the other end of the halyard down and undo the bowl and that's tied to the cover. Um, if you're concerned about pulling your halyard up the mast by accident while you're undoing everything else, you can take the, the two ends, hold them together, and tie an overhand knot and then you won't accidentally pull one end of the halyard up the mast. You can always get it undone. Next step, take the cover off the boat. Usually bungee snap together. They need to be unclipped. This one's actually broken. Uh, but then you gotta undo the snaps and the zipper. Again, up here, there's usually bungee and snaps. This bungee is missing on this cover. Do the snaps here and the best practice is to immediately take the cover and tie it down to the dock so what I usually do is take one of the boat tie downs and tie it through the uh, the string that you hold the cover up with and just tie a couple overhand knots so that the cover can't blow off the dock and we don't lose any water. I then take the cover and put it under the bow so I'm not tripping over it all the time. Um, so it's easier to rig and launch. Okay, next step. The jib should be rolled and in the bottom of the boat. Um, occasionally it's not and it'll probably be on the counter in the, uh, in the lower lobby. Um, that's sometimes they get left in there when people sail without a jib. Um, so I usually take the bottom front corner, which is the tack, and attach it to the bow first. You can tell it's the tack because it usually has the logo sticker on it. Uh, it also should have a wire with a loop built into it coming out. And the angle that it forms is a 90 degree angle. So that way you don't confuse it with the top of the sail. Um, gotta make sure the wire is gonna go up. So you gotta orient the loop, the wire loop at the bottom the correct way. You undo the back split ring and clevis pin. You slide the wire loop between the holes. And then the clevis pin goes through both sides of this flange and through the wire loop. And then to make sure that the pin doesn't pull out, you put the split ring through the hole on the end. Okay, so now your tack is set up. You unroll the sail completely. I usually run my hands up to the head. You can see the head is much skinnier and also has the other end of the wire coming out with the loop built into it. And that's what we're gonna attach the jib halyard to. So the jib halyard should be um, tied up alongside the mast. Um, it's usually one end is cleated in the jib halyard cleat on the bottom. Going to undo the cleat. And then in this case, this one, uh, the, the other end of the halyard 
is attached to the Cunningham. Sometimes people will also just have a slip knot in the jib halyard, which it'll be attached to, but you gotta undo this shackle and pull it out. Okay, and then you always wanna taking the shackle off of either the Cunningham or at, off of a slip knot tied into the rope part of the halyard. Um, you gotta look up and make sure that the halyard isn't twisted or tangled. Make sure it's running smoothly. Make sure you do that with any halyard before you attach it to a sail, just so you don't have to redo things afterwards, okay? So the wire part of the halyard is gonna attach to the loop at the top of the wire uh, at the head of the jib. Um, the sides of the shackle just go around the loop, push the pin through. It's gotta line up with the notch so that it goes through and then you turn it 180 degrees to lock it on. The jib is a small enough sail that you can pull it up on the dock and you don't have to worry about the boat blowing over or uh, you know, it's, it's not difficult to pull up either no matter where the boat is pointed. Um, the, the jib halyard is what controls the tension of the whole rig. So you'll notice that without the jib halyard tight, the whole mass rig system is pretty loose and floppy. So the jib halyard tension pulls the mass forward, pulls the front of the jib tight and tensions up the whole ring. rig. That's why it's got wire in it and that's why it's got a pulley system built into it. So you have to find the end of the rope part. And the end of the rope part, probably gonna wanna come over here. The end of the rope part goes inside the jib sheet and inside the hiking strap bend, bungee and goes through this turning block at the base of the mast. And then it goes back up through this block that's built into the halyard. Okay, so you pull that through, and now you've set up a three to one pulley system, which enables you to get more tension more easily. So you can pull down on that, and then you slide your hand down to the cleat, wrap around the cleat once, go diagonally across the cleat and around the end, you make a small loop and you twist the loop such that the rope is running underneath itself and parallel to the other diagonal. And you pull that tight to clean it off. Now you'll notice the whole rig system is held firmly in place. Okay, next thing to check is make sure your chip sheets are rigged properly. They go inside the side stays, uh, one to each side. On the FJs, they go through a ratchet block built into the side of the boat. You have to make sure they go through such that the block clicks when you pull in and doesn't click and doesn't spin when you let out. Okay, with a 420, there's just an eye on the tank and a cleat. Um, okay, next step. I'm gonna attach the boom to the mast. So again, this is a uh, simple split ring and uh, clevis pin system. So the, the clevis pin and split ring is usually either on the gooseneck or on the end of the boom. Um, so undo the split ring, pull the clevis pin, and then you line up this U-shaped metal bracket with the holes on the gooseneck. and try to wiggle the pin through. There we go. And now the split ring goes on. Get that end in the hole and then spin it on. Okay. So the main shell should still be attached to the boom with a plastic slider slid into the boom and the outhaul rig. Sometimes it's not, and then you'll have to slide the sail in and re-rig the outhaul. But it should be like this. Uh, unroll the sail, make sure when you unroll the sail that you keep the foot of the boom, or the foot of the sail, untwisted relative to the boom. If you do it wrong, you pull it out like this, and then you'll have a twist in the bottom won't maybe sometimes realize it until your sail's up and then you have to undo a lot of things. Okay, so now we unroll the sail. 
follow up the uh, luff rope, get to the head of the sail. Okay, so now the main halyard gets attached to the head of the mainsail. So you can un untie your knot that's holding the two ends together. And the part of the main halyard that comes out the back of the mast is the one that's going to attach to the head of the sail. So you take the end of the rope, goes through the hole in the headboard, goes up and around the long part that's going up the mast, and then it goes back through the hole in the headboard. Okay, and you need to pull enough through to tie an eight knot in still. So you take this tail, tie an eight knot as a stopper knot, pull it nice and tight, and then you have to pull that end right up against the headboard and you can pull the sail down. So now you don't have very much knot between the top of the sail and the top of the mast so that the sail can go all the way up. Yet at the same time, this part pulls directly symmetrically off of the head and doesn't twist the head. Okay, I'm gonna move around to the other side of the boat. It's generally easier to pull your mainsail off if you take the whole mainsail and pull it over to the starboard side of the boat because the cutout in the mast for the groove is on the starboard side of the mast. So the, the luff rope and this little slider will slide into the mast more easily if it's all bunched up and lined up on the starboard side. So next thing I'm gonna do is start this, put the white slider in, this plastic slider, and the, the rope, okay? And I can take up slack on the other end of the house. Now the mainsail, you're not going to pull up all the way with the boat on the dock um, because the boat can start tipping over and sailing on the dock. And also if the wind is the wrong direction, it gets really hard to pull up without the uh, boat being pointed into the wind. So usually you only pull it up about halfway and then you take the end of the halyard and you just wrap it around the cleat a couple times. It's a temporary uh, cleating job just so your sail doesn't fall down and the end of your halyard doesn't get lost. Um, sometimes if it's really windy, you also want to keep your jib from flapping and flogging. So in an FJ, you can pull the jib sheet tight and just tie a slip knot in the end so that the jib is kind of held in tight so it's not um, flapping around. In a 420, you can just pull it through the cleat and, uh, and uh, hold it tight. It's not very windy today, so I'm gonna undo this slip knot. Okay, next step is to check out the back of the boat. The boat should be left with the tank plugs undone. This boat was not left with the tank plugs undone, um, such that if the tanks have leaked at all, the water can drain, and then you can also keep tab on whether the tanks are leaking badly or not. So they should, you should find the boat with the tank plugs undone and the tennis ball drains in the back completely open. Okay, so first step, screw in the tank plugs so that if you capsize or fill your cockpit with water, they won't, won't, no water will get in the tanks and there'll still be plenty of buoyancy. The boat should float even with the cockpit completely full of water. Uh, and then you wanna pull the tennis balls tight. So there's a bungee that attaches through the tennis balls. There's a line that attaches to the bungee. Line goes through a cleat and then through a block. So all you have to do is pull the end of the line from the block and it pulls the bungee tight and pulls the tennis balls into the holes. Um, I always adjust the tennis ball so that the bungee is centered in the hole because it make it seals it slightly better than if your tennis ball was crooked like that. You can see it can leave a little gap. So you kind of want to make sure that the tennis ball is centered on the hole. Um, and then to undo them at the end of the day, you just pull between the block and the cleat and it releases them from the cleat. Okay. While I'm here, I usually check over the rudder. Um, so a couple things about the rudder. I usually check the universal joint between the tiller and the tiller extension because these are rubber pieces that uh, crack pretty easily, particularly in cold weather. And if they start cracking, they're gonna break soon. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, the tiller 
should have a line running under it that comes from the rudder blade. Okay, this line needs to be pulled tight and cleated. That keeps the tiller from pulling out of the rudder head. Um, and in some boats, it keeps the blade from kicking up in the rudder head. Um, it holds the blade down. Um, the other thing they should all have is a leash. So there should be a line tied onto the rudder head. Usually there's a bowl in here and then it, that line runs to the back of the boat where there's a metal eye strap and the line should be tied there too, also usually with the bowl in. That way, if your rudder stopper on the back of the boat here fails when you capsize and your rudder falls off, uh, it won't float away and you'll still be able to retrieve it. So I always check that when I come back here. I should straighten this out. Okay. Yeah. So we're launching this boat on uh, on the long dock where the boats are kind of stored parallel to the dock. To actually launch it, we're gonna have we're gonna want to push the boat back off of the cradle, off of the V berth, and then and then turn it 90 degrees to the dock and slide it in the water. So the first step is to actually slide it back. So you grab it near the bow. Usually. I got two people. Maybe Josh, you can help me. It's Josh, right? Justin. Justin, sorry, Justin. <laughs> okay, so grab it here. We're gonna slide it back about three feet. So it's to the back there of the carpet. Stern is at the back of the carpet. Now we can start turning it sideways and then pull it out of the V cradle. Okay, and then to launch it, it's better to get it perpendicular. Justin, can you grab right there? Okay, so we'll lift a little and slide a little and try to slide it on the carpet and tr if there's any nail heads sticking up, try to avoid them. Always hold the boat by the bow so that immediately it pivots into the wind and doesn't start pulling away from the dock and sailing away. When you tie it up, it's good to tie it up so that the boat is overlapped with the empty space on the dock so that you're not blocking anyone and it's not banging into, like the boom's not banging into a boat that's already on the dock. So there should be loops on the dock, line you tie onto those. I usually just do a couple half hitches if it's gonna be a short term um, tying job. Okay, so next step, I usually get the mainsail up. In this particular case, the main halyard is actually on the outside of the mast, so it's a little bit harder to reach from the dock. So usually in that case, I step into the boat in front of the mast, one foot on either side, and then I stand on this little, or sit on this little V splash guard, okay? Now I have my main halyard right here. I unwrap it from the cleat, and I can pull down on it and feed with my other hand so that the luff rope feeds into the groove on the mast without getting caught. Um, if your sail is having a hard time going up, it's usually one of like four or five things. First off, it could be getting stuck where it feeds into the mast, okay? Because you're not feeding enough or because the outhaul is too tight. If the outhaul is nice and loose, then it can feed in. If the outhaul is really tight, it pulls back on the sail. And it's hard for it to feed into this groove. Groove. The second thing is the vang could be attached and too tight. If this is pulled tight and cleated, then the boom can't go up and the sail can't go up. So the vang needs to be eased off. Sometimes the main sheet itself is tangled or knotted. And again, that prevents the boom from going up, which prevents the sail come from going up. The final thing is sometimes the end of the boom is stuck under something. Commonly, it'll be stuck under the rudder in the back of the boat, or it could be could be out over the side of the dock and stuck stuck on something on the dock okay so you got to make sure that the sail goes all the way up because the boat sails better and also the boom is higher which makes it less likely that you're going to hit your head with the boom so you can kind of get someone else to help you you can kind of feel when it bottoms out but you want it all the way up you can maybe take a video of that you can see it all the way up okay so now all of the main halyards have a metal ring built into them um, that you'll get to when you pull the sail all the way up, okay? So the, the metal ring is gonna act like a turning block 
um, to help you get a little more um, um, power to get your sail to last a little bit up. So basically, um, this one's already done, but you you take the line and you and you take it below the ring and you feed it through the ring, so you make this running loop. Okay, this running loop, you hook on the main halyard cleat on the starboard side of the mast. Okay, so the halyard cleat is acting like a turning block. The ring is acting like a turning block. Very primitive system, but you get a little three to one pulley system. Gives you a little more power to make sure you get the last little bit up. Okay, and then same cleating technique. You go down, you do one lap around the cleat, diagonally across. You make a loop with the tail parallel to the diagonal part, and then you twist that loop so that the line runs under itself and locks onto the cleat, okay? Next step is to rig your Cunningham. So the Cunningham is uh, just a short piece of line hanging off the mast, and it runs up through this hole or grommet in the mainsail, on the front of the mainsail. Feed it through there, and then there's that cleat on the starboard side of the mast that the main halyard was stored in overnight that's actually the Cunningham cleat. So then you feed the end through that cleat and just pull it snug uh, so that the, there's a little bit of tension on the front of the sail. Okay, next step. Um, usually pull the out haul tight. So you usually have it loose for uh, getting the mainsail up. And you usually want a pretty flat out haul. You don't want a lot of um, belly in the sail. Also need to take this white slider, actually, Made a mistake. Got to keep the outhaul off until this slider goes into the mast. Like that. Then you can pull the outhaul on so that the outhaul has something that uh, that resists it on the other side that stretches out the foot. And then the outhaul get tight. Then you take, usually with the vang, all you do is take the slack out and cleat it by pulling up. You generally don't need tension pulled on it unless it's very windy. So generally just slack out and cleat it. Okay. I'm gonna move back in the boat. You can either climb off the boat and climb around. This is a little bit more tricky maneuver. I lean the boat one way and slip around the mast. You gotta keep your weight centered or the boat can capsize. Okay. On the Flying Junior or FJ, the centerboard system consists of a line which hold, pulls the centerboard up. Okay, you gotta uncleat that, pull the centerboard down. Um, but now that you need something to hold it down because it'll float up. So there's a bungee that comes out the back of the trunk. You hook the loop of the bungee over one of the knobs. Okay, and then you take the line that comes from there and you wrap it under the other knob and then over that over that knob that keeps it from slipping off the knobs and gives it a little more tension so to adjust it now pull up on the line and then the bungee will kind of keep it down the 420 system is a little different there's a line with a cleat on the starboard side that pulls it up and there's a line with a cleat on the port side that pulls it down so you got to uncleat one and pull the other to make it go up or down Okay, next step, the rudder. So when you're back here putting the rudder on, just be a little careful that you don't get hit in the head by the boom. Um, again, check, make sure there's a leash. Make sure that the line under the tiller is tight and cleated or tied off so that the tiller doesn't pull out and the rudder blade doesn't kick up. Okay, so on the back of the boat, there are two pins sticking up. They're called pintles. The bottom one is longer. So usually what you do is you get the tip of the bottom one on to this hole. That's the, uh, these are called gudgeons. And then once that's on, then you can line up the top uh, hole with the top pin. And then when it's lined up, you press in this metal tab so that the rudder can slide down onto the pins. And this rudder tab is a rudder lock. So it's always good to, ooh, this one's not working. So it's always good to check by pulling up to make sure it's working. That's why some of them fail. That's why you have a leash. Um, if, if it doesn't lock it down, now I bent it out a little and it's locking it down. 
If it doesn't lock it down, find someone to help bend that out and fix it for you. The rudder should lock down like that. The first thing, well, first thing you want to do is have someone tie the boat off so it's not going to blow away. I'm going to assume that's already done. But um, the thing that, um, you know, kind of secures the boat and makes it let low risk is immediately get the mainsail down because that eliminates the power. So I, I undo the main halyard and get the main down really early. So I uncleat it and then I take the loop off of the cleat right away and pull it down so that the loop gets, uh, gets all the way small. Okay, that way you can't accidentally pull the end of your halyard up the mast. Okay, and then you stick your hand in here and grab the sail and you can pull it down uh, by grabbing the luff rope. Okay, try to have it all fall into the boat. next thing I'll do is get the centerboard up. So I'm going to move the boom out of the way so that you can see. Normally you wouldn't have to do that. So you can't just undo the bungee. If you undo, undo the bungee, it floats up, but as soon as you lift the boat, it'll fall back down again. So you undo the bungee and then you pull the uphaul all the way tight and cleat it. On the 420, you'll undo the one on the port side, which is the downhaul, and you pull the uphaul, which is on this side, all the way tight and cleat it. Okay, and before we pull the boat up, we also need to get the rudder off. So go back, go to the back of the boat. Bend this metal tab in so that the gudgeon can clear the metal tab and pull up while bending it in. And the rudder gets put into the boat with the tiller and extension on the floor along the tank and the rudder blade uh, resting on the side of the tank. All right, so now I'll step out of the boat, being careful not to put weight on the edge, step onto the dock. I'm gonna untie the bow line before I start to pull the boat up onto the dock. usually toss the bow, bow line into the boat. Um, pulling the boat up onto the dock, on this long dock where the boats are parallel, generally it's easier if you pull it up perpendicular to the dock on the sort of back or aft part of the green carpet. So I have it lined up near the bow of the next boat. Push the stern out so that the boat is perpendicular and pull it up here. This is often a two-person job, but you want to pull it up like this, get it past the center of gravity, and then you can rotate it. And now continue pulling it up into the cradle. Um, so it's important to pull it up into the cradle enough. I'm going to straighten out the back first. Okay, and then we're gonna look at the cradle. So, if the boat's not pulled up enough, it's only resting on the point of the hull, and the boat can rock easily in the cradle, which is a good way to store it, and plus the point loader. Okay, so you wanna pull it up enough so that the load is carried over a wider surface area. So it's gotta be enough that the cradle matches the V of the hull perfectly. If you pull it up too much, it'll only be resting on the sides of the V and there'll be an air gap underneath the, the point of the hull. So that's too much. So you want it just right so that the V of the cradle matches the V of the hull perfectly. That way it'll be most stable and most supported. Okay. And make sure it's straight in the cradle. Next thing I always do is undo the tennis ball drains. Make sure I pull the, make sure that the tennis balls come out. Undo the tank plugs so that if they've leaked at all, they can drain. And if they leak really badly, we can fix the boat. Okay, next step 
I'm gonna undo the main and the main halyard. Go pull the main all the way down. Undo this knot on the main halyard. So undo the eight knot. Pull the main halyard off. Again, if you want to be safe, you can tie the ends of the main halyard together so that you can't pull it up the mast. Or you can just be super careful not to pull on either end of the halyard. Um, going to undo the Cunningham next. Take it out of the cleat. Take it out of the sail. Going to ease my outhaul off so that the white slider comes out of the mast easily. Next, I'm going to take my boom off of the mast. So undo the split ring, push the clevis pin out, lower the boom, the clevis pin and split ring go back into the gooseneck fitting. Okay, so now the boom is out of the way, which makes it easier to roll the mainsail up. So what I usually do when I roll the mainsail is I stand upwind, and then usually the wind helps me spread the sail out. Um, so I'll stand up and then I'll kind of go like that, spread the sail out, and then I take the top batten of the mainsail and lay it on the tank. And you fold the head down to the top batten, and then you use the top batten as a rolling guide. And that way all the battens will be parallel and will fit into the roll. And the tank also lets you, helps you keep the roll in a good shape and not crumbling or um, bending or getting a crimp in it. It's good to spread it out. It should be a nice smooth roll. The idea is to have no folds or, uh, or crinkles because those build up in a sail and wear the sail out more quickly. You can roll it right into the boat. Okay, next step, take the jib down. Again, undo the jib halyard line from the cleat. Okay. Pull top of the jib down. I always tie up the jib halyard right away. So I undo it from the head. And the way I think is the best to tie it up is I put it at gooseneck height tie a slip knot in the main halyard or jib halyard in the rope part and clip the shackle onto that. Then I pull it tight and just cleat it off on the jib halyard cleat at the base of the mast. Okay. Uh, I find it easier to actually roll the jib with it still attached to the bow of the boat. So I just put it on one side, the sail on one side of the deck, and then the, the jib you're actually going to roll from the very top down, not, you don't fold it down first. So take the wire at the top, I usually just fold it over, try to make a relatively small roll, just roll it, the deck floor deck acts kind of like a table to roll it on, so you get a nice flat smooth roll. Trying to not get any folds in it. Okay, and I didn't even have to undo my jib sheets or my bow tack pin. Now I'm gonna undo the tack pin. Whoops, got the ring, undo the pin, the pin back into the bow, the ring back on. Now I can just take the whole jib and flip it back into the boat like this. You don't even have to undo the jib sheets. Okay, next step, let's put the cover on. So if you put your boat, uh, your cover away properly, should be under the bow and it should be tied on to one of the boat tie downs. So you undo the boat tie down from the cover. Now you have this 
string system that is used to hold the cover up. So you know that's sort of in the middle of the stern. So that way you can orient the cover. Uh, incidentally, the FJ covers are gray and say FJ on them. The 420 covers are light blue and say 420 on them. Uh, so I've got that in the right place. Now I just got to make sure that the zipper is on the correct side. So this, in this case, the zipper is on the starboard side. So I don't have to move this around in front of the mast. So now, this, normally there'd be a bungee to attach here. This one's broken. So I'm just gonna do the snaps. Normally this ring would pull tight and attach to a hook that came out of the front part of the cover. But it's broken on this case. Again up front, I would do the bungee and the bottom two snaps. All I ever do is the bottom two snaps. I don't do the other snaps around the stays. So again, back here, the starboard side stay. Normally there'd be snapping bungee together, but here there's just snaps, okay? And then I take the, uh, by the zipper, there's a, a, a leather strap with a 90 degree uh, snap fitting. That fitting slides through a hole in the front part of the cover. Turn it 90 degrees to lock it. And then you can start on the zipper. Pull the zipper tight. I do snap the snaps above the zipper just to take some load off the zipper. Uh, I don't bother with the collar around the mast. And then I take the cover, pull it over the corner, and make sure that the sides are under the rail so that the cover can't blow off. Now, notice I put the cover on before I tied the boat down. There was a reason for that. And that's that the tie downs need to go over the edge of the cover. So they go over this part and leaving this snapped, I'm able to take the end of the tie down and go through this hole in the cover and go through the eye bolt that holds the side stay. Okay, so feed that through, pull it tight. Now it's going over the edge of the cover, which helps hold the cover on the boat. Next, go through the loop, the trucker's hitch that's in the tie down. And now you're able to pull tight in line with the whole line okay so now you have good tension you can pinch the line where it comes out of the trucker's hitch and that holds the tension okay now you have your this line loose and your other hand free to wrap the line around the uh, around itself above the trucker's hitch and underneath itself so that's a half hitch pull that down tight right against the trucker's hitch and you maintain some tension on the boat so, and then you always do a second one. You always do two half hitches and there's still a little tension so the boat can't rock around on the dock. Okay, so you gotta do both sides. So again, bottom two snaps. I leave the snaps open around the side stay. It goes over the edge of the cover through the U-bolt. Back down through the trucker's hitch. Pull tight. Pinch it where it comes out of the trucker's hitch. Wrap it around above the trucker's hitch and then underneath itself to make a half hitch. Pull that down right against the trucker's hitch and then you always do a second half hitch. Otherwise it'll come undone. Okay, final step is to tie the cover up so that rainwater doesn't collect load up the boat so I'll untie my safety knot. The front part of the halyard goes in front of the spreader and goes into the Cunningham cleat. Okay. The aft part of the halyard which comes off the back of the mast gets tied onto the top of this string web and should do a bowl in so that it doesn't come undone. Rabbit comes out of the hole, around the tree, back in the hole. 
Okay. And then you pull the halyard tight so that the cover has a downward slope everywhere so that rain, all rainwater will drain off. It's just enough so that it has a downward slope everywhere and then you won't get any puddling of the water. Um, that's it. That's how uh, to rig and de-rig uh, Harvard boats.